Together. And he gets up from far back following cover. He wore down the pace setter. Sports Fancy to win by a length in 151 flat. Sports Fancy held for second. And Lizzie Afia was 21 to 1. Ah. Oh. Uncustomarily long with Andy Miller, who finished third. We caught up with Tim Teachick and we asked him about both big wins he had Saturday and Sunday here at Harris Chester. Let's go first to Total Truth. Now, he was the 2006 Pacer of the Year in the entire country, yet he's only had, what, a handful of starts this year. And you win in 149-3, and three, you quarter polled and, and went from there. So what's he looking like? You know, he was really, really good the other day. You know, he, he took a little break there, and he qualified back and had one good start. And the other day, he went a, a great mile. You know, he really was strong and, and really beat some good horses doing it. Right. Now let's look at uh, the next day where your tact was entirely different. You quarter pole with the one horse. The next one you, you, you did your typical Tim Tietrich patient drive and sat behind live cover and got up with enhanced night. Tell us about that trip. A lot of people call that move the Timmy T swoop when you just sit Woo! back and uh, swoop them late. But uh, she's a great mare. Made a lot of money this year. And um, I don't think she's been a bad race all year that I even can remember. She's just all ultra consistent and she's very tough to beat in that class. Now, I know you're a baseball fan, and the Phillies, the, the whole town's in a frenzy. And because you're in the town, if Chester's in the shadow of Philly, everybody's going nuts about the Phillies. you like the Phillies at all? Yeah, I'm a fan of baseball, and I like the Phillies. You know, they had a great season, and for the Philly fans, it's great for them to have a chance to get to go to the World Series and stuff. So I'm um, right behind them and hope they win it all. You think they can do the uh, the Tietrick swoop and win the World Series? I hope. I don't know if they can do. You know, be, um, shut out the other team, but uh, they got a shot to win. You got to be in it to win it. That's what we say in this sport. So I'm sure they, the baseball fans say the same thing. He never has a shortage of words, does he? No. And no. he's not afraid to say what's on his mind, which is good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Timmy, for that. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we'll have a look at our blast from the past. And this is going to be a goodie, too. Going back to the 50s, that black and white newsreel stuff, which mm -hmm. is kind of funny, the stuff you don't remember, but you play along because we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and also, Sonny the Paddock Judge will have uh, an interesting segment about horses that ship into Harris Chester because nobody's stable here. That's right. If you don't know that, we'll be back soon. Sue is the paparazzo of the group. She's the one that takes the photos of the things you want to remember and a few things you don't. Everyone plays a part at Harris. Only 10 minutes south of the Philadelphia airport. Welcome back. It's now time for my favorite segment because I remember all of these races. <laughs> We're going to go back to 1957 to the Hamiltonian. And the Hamiltonian, for those of you who are historians of harness racing, will know that Goshen was the home for several years. Mm -hmm. It moved to DuCoin for several years before moving on eventually to its current home, the Meadowlands. That's right. But I digress. Let's go back now to 1957. It was a terrific matchup between Hickory Smoke and Hoot Song. The first time at DuCoin, the 1957 Hamiltonian. Here's our blast from the past. Let's watch. The Hamiltonian is held for the first time in the Midwest, the southern Illinois mining town of DuCoin, in a two horse final heat. Hickory Smoke and Hoot Song fight it out for the first prize money and the coveted trophy. Number two, Hickory Smoke goes into the lead. The Hamiltonian has been a fixture at Goshen, New York for 28 years. Its westward move was news, and five heats today was news. And now Hoot Song tries to make news by catching Hickory Smoke. She is gaining. failed, Hoot Song has dropped back and it's clear sailing to the finish line for Hickory Smoke, son of Titan Hanover, winner in 1945. A victory worth some $48,000. Big day for Hickory Smoke, driver John Simpson and two happy owners. Good race. Hickory Smoke, a legendary sire too, reigned by John Simpson, not to be confused with his son John Simpson Jr. <laughs> this was the original John Simpson who won that one. In 1957, hope you enjoyed that blast from the past. It's now time to go to the paddock mm -hmm. and the ruler of the paddock, the man, the top dog, the head honcho, the big guy, you know, Sonny, the paddock judge, is going to talk to you about shipping into Harris Chester. Let's watch. Today we're going to take a look at what it takes to bring a horse to the racetrack. Here at Harris Chester, we have no barn area, so we have to rely on everyday shippers to bring the horses in. I'm here with Larry Burke. He's a professional shipper, and he does this for a living. Larry, tell us what it takes to bring a horse, or many of them, that you bring to the racetrack every day. 
Well, we start out about 6 o'clock in the morning loading them. Some of them load good, some of them take a little while. Um, we head down to Chester and we get down here and get the horses Lasex if they're on Lasex, get them in their stalls, bring in the equipment for them, and uh, leave the rest up to the grooms. Does it make you nervous that some of these horses are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars knowing how dangerous it is out on the roads? Yeah, we have to carry pretty good insurance policy on them. It's not us we worry about our driving, it's the other people on the road. And if a horse gets hurt, you're responsible for them. Do they like riding? Do they like getting into the trailers? Well, some of them will walk right in. Other ones, you got to rustle them around a little bit to get them in. And usually once you get them in, they ride pretty good. But some of them do a lot of kicking and carry on a little bit till you get going. Good job. Okay, when we come back, we'll have a look at our Around the Oval. You'll get to see Badlands Nitro against Shadow Play. Boy, that's an exciting confrontation when we come back. Rob is the rabbit's foot because everyone feels a little luckier when he's around. And that's why he's a part of your group. Everyone plays a part at Harris. Only 10 minutes south of the Philadelphia airport. One breeder has had more winners than any other. One breeder has produced the most world champions. One breeder has held the record for earnings since records have been kept. One breeder has dominated the industry with the top stallions, the best brood mares, and the most sought after yearlings. Hanover Shoe Farms, the greatest name in harness racing. Welcome back. It's time to go to Maywood Park in the Midwest of Chicago, the $275,000 Windy City, a three-year-old open pace, and it attracted Shadow Play, who was the big favorite, uh, and also Badlands Nitro, who won the Battle of the Brandywine here, was the second choice at 9-5. to five. This is a great race. Here it comes. Badlands Nitro uh, leads at Shadow Play right alongside those two now. We'll battle it out in the final eighth. Mucho Sizi still in it. They turn for home. It's Badlands Nitro, Shadow Play trying to wear them down. Badlands Nitro, Shadow Play, and Mucho Sleazy. And now Shadow Play starts to get the edge on Badlands Nitro. Shadow Play getting up. Boy, it was a wild one. Badlands Nitro got parked to the corner by Mucho Sleazy, finally made the top, went the rest of the way around, and Shadow Play, who never saw the rail and must have paced like two miles, yeah. wound up getting up on the last jump to win in 150 and four on a half mile track. So he's a monster. And everybody wants to see the ultimate confrontation between some beach somewhere, Shadow Play, and Artificial. Yes. Hopefully we'll get to see that, okay? Well, we are fresh out of time, my dear. I do want to say um, Walter Warrington, who is a longtime horseman, just recently passed away. Huge friend of harness racing, and uh, we want to just um, thank Steve's you. Steve's dad. Steve Warrington's dad, Danny Warrington's dad. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to Walter for a lot of great years. And he was a terrific harness driver, too. Yes. We will be missed. God bless him. Okay, until next week, for Heather Moffat, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you it doesn't cost anything to be nice. Take care now.